You've seen the newsreels featuring the dangerous feats of Daring Do from the front lines, and now you want to contribute to the ongoing battlefield glory of House Davian. A noble endeavor, indeed. This course will give you a full rundown of the basics, and you'll learn the design rules you need to follow if you want to find yourself in one of those cushy government jobs with access to slush fund money. The design steps listed here may look complicated, but we'll go through each in turn, so take a moment and briefly familiarize yourself with this list. You don't want to be the one stuck behind while your classmates are ahead. Most importantly, relax. You'll have plenty of time to study. When determining tonnage, try to think of what role you want your machine to play. Remember, everything from infantry to fire support has its place. Light mechs are good for scouting and harassing. Speedy machines that are fast enough to remove themselves from behind enemy lines without having to engage in more than a light skirmish. But be careful, light mechs are notoriously low on armor. Medium mechs are a great way to lend support to your lance due to still maintaining patently decent maneuverability and extra armor to last through more than just a dust-up. Heavy mechs are the workhorse of the Inner Sphere. They're often on cleanup duty to make way for the heavier Assault Class battle mechs and are brimming with firepower though sometimes at a trade-off of armor. Assault mechs are for when only maximum levels of violence is called for. When you absolutely, positively need to stomp out every last mother's son in the room, or go toe-to-toe -to -toe with larger-than-average threats, you're looking to wade into the firefight in one of these monsters. The tonnage ranges are listed by each weight class for ease of reference. For this film, we'll take you through one of the Inner Sphere's more classic, enduring platforms, the Catapult. Now that we've determined the size of our new design, the backbone at the beginning of the process is to add its internal structure. At the base level, the internal structure of a battle mech will always weigh 10% of the machine's total tonnage. This will never result in anything other than a half or a whole number, so don't worry about rounding up or down. Since the catapult is 65 tons, that means the internal structure will weigh 6.5 tons. At every weight, a battle mech has a minimum amount of internal structure needed to support it, and the amount of structure for the tonnage spent to acquire it can be seen on the table below. Once your internal structure has been mounted, the next step on the list is to consider the kind of torque necessary to carry your machine as fast as you want it to go. To do this, we must first determine the engine rating. Take the tonnage of your chassis and multiply by the amount of walking movement you want your machine to have. Since we want our catapult to be able to maneuver into firing range at a relatively decent clip, we'll give it a walking movement of 4, which gives us our engine rating of 260. Use the table below to determine the weight of your new engine. Remember, your running speed will always be based on your walking speed. Multiply your walking movement by 1.5 and round fractions up to see your running speed. At this step, you'll decide whether or not you want your unit to be jump capable. Added maneuverability on the battlefield is always a plus, but in the design state, it will cost you. The heavier your machine is, the more lift is required, and therefore heavier jump jets need to be used. Since it's critical that hills and trees don't slow down the fire support capability of our catapult, we'll outfit it with four jump jets. Remember, at the base level, you can never exceed your walking speed in jump capacity, though technological advancements down the road may allow this to be possible. All battle mechs require a sophisticated cockpit and an advanced gyroscope to function as intended. At the base level, your cockpit will take up 3 tons of your total weight. The weight of your gyroscope, however, will be bulkier the more tonnage it's trying to sustain. To find out how much your gyroscope weighs, take your engine rating and divide by 100, rounding up to the nearest whole number. The result is the weight, in tons, of your gyro. Now that we've made all necessary decisions about how the catapult will operate while upwardly mobile, let's move on to the final three steps to complete our design. The cornerstone of any solid design, armor is what's going to keep you in the fight to deliver as much of your battle mech's weapon payload as it can as many times as is possible. For every ton, a battle mech being constructed at the base level will receive 16 points of armor to spread around the chassis. You can never have more armor in any one location equal to more than double that location's internal structure rating. For example, the catapult carries 15 pips of internal structure in each leg, so it therefore cannot carry more than 30 points of armor in those locations. 
The only exception to this is the head, which can carry a maximum of 9 armor points, despite only 3 points internal structure. We want our catapult to have survivability, but still carry a decent payload. So, to make life easy, let's give it 10 tons of armor. This gives us an even 160 points to spread around, which we'll allocate thusly. The final stop before choosing weapons is your heat dissipation capacity. You can either complete this step now or come back to it later, but at some stage you'll have to decide how big of a punch you're looking to pack and how to take care of the consequences. At the base level, additional heat sinks may be purchased at the cost of one ton each. Be careful, you may have to allocate these in the final step. All battle mechs come with 10 heat sinks built in at no cost in tonnage to you, so any number of extras you add will be in addition to this integral number. Our catapult will mount an additional 5. It's all led up to this. After everything else we've done so far, that leaves us with exactly 20 tons left to allocate for any offensive purposes, and we've got just the thing. We'll load a couple of long-range missile payloads onto each shoulder, and we'll add a ton of ammunition each. Two of those with a ton of ammo each takes up 16 tons total, leaving us with four of our original 20 to spare. As backup weapons, we'll place four medium lasers on the body at a cost of one ton each. This leaves us at exactly 65 tons even and heading into the final step. The details of each individual weapon is going to vary insofar as weight, space, and other minutia, so it's best to consult your handbook if you want specific information on each weapon system in order to make an educated decision. Once your design is complete, you'll need to transfer that data onto a specialized sheet. Starting with the armor and internal structure, simply count the number of points in a given location and fill in any extra bubbles to note them as not part of the machine, leaving each location's precise armor and internal structure points blank to note them as part of your design. As for the critical hit table, consult your handbook to see how much critical space each of your weapons take up. This information can be found in a column listed next to each weapon for ease of reference. In the case of our catapult's weapons, the long-range missile launchers take up three critical slots each, and each medium laser occupies one. Our catapult isn't a close-up brawler, so we'll remove the hand and lower arm actuators. Remember, hand and lower arm actuators can be arbitrarily removed at your discretion in order to save space. Finally, to figure out how many of your battle mech's heat sinks must be allocated to the critical hit table, divide your engine rating by 25. The result, rounded down, is the number of heat sinks that your engine can house without additional allocation. Any extra heat sinks above this number must be allocated to your critical hit table, which means our catapult has five heat sinks to write in. And there you have it. You're now ready to tackle the basics of battle mech design. More advanced options may become available over time, but we here at the NAIS are confident that you'll be able to use this information to adapt to any design challenges thrown your way. Be sure to smash our like button and subscribe to our channel! Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.